hello and welcome to this video where today we're going to be looking at gravitational fields again and in particular we'll be looking at gravitational field strength so as a quick reminder um, we saw in a previous video that there were two different types of field there's a radial field um, which looks like this where the field lines seem to all look like um, the spokes on a, bi on a bicycle wheel um, or we've got a uniform field like this where all of the lines are parallel to each other and they're all equally spaced um, now we're going to be concentrating just on the radial field for this one and if you remember from the previous video what we saw was that the strength of the gravitational field was stronger closer to the planet than it was further away and we could tell that because the gravitation that these um, field lines are closer together here than they are out here so if you look they're closer here than they are here so the, that shows us that the gravitational field is stronger here than it is here um, now it would be really nice to know exactly how strong this is and just from these pictures we can't do that so uh, that's what we're going to do next we're going to look at the gravitational field strength in other words how strong the gravitational field is at a certain point um, so the gravitational field strength is often given the symbol g um, it's defined as the force per unit mass um, and it's measured in newtons per kilogram um, so it's given by this expression here this expression you've really seen before because um, you often use it to the force you you think really think about is the weight and weight is the mass times the gravitational field strength so this you've really seen before um, and what it tells us is if if we know the weight of an object and we know the mass of the object we can work out the strength of the gravita gravitational field that that object's in however sometimes we don't know that uh, we don't know for example the weight of an object um, but there is a way that we can work out the gravitational field strength just from knowing for example the mass of the earth um, so before um, in the first video on gravitational fields we saw that um, Newton had said that the force of attraction between two objects was given by this R squared and what we've written what we've said for this particular situation is that the capital M is going to be the mass of our planet the little m is going to mass be the mass of our object that we've placed inside the gravitational field of the planet and R is going to be the distance between the center of the planet because you remember um, we're only thinking about point um, charges or point masses in this particular case and so it's the distance from the center of the earth to the center of our object so r is the distance from the center of the object to the center of the earth but then we've got r squared on the bottom now if we look at this we can work out what the gravitational field strength is by combining these two equations because the gravitational field strength is this f divided by m so in other words g the gravitational field strength is the force which is given by that divided by the mass of our object okay so I've got a mass of the object on top mass of the object on bottom they cancel out and so the gravitational field strength of this planet is given by G M over R squared where M is the mass of the planet and R is the distance from the center of the planet to the object to the to the point at which we want to know the gravitational field strength so there's not necessarily an object there now um, so we could say okay so at a certain distance away from this planet what is the gravitational field strength how strong is the gravitational field at that point now if you look this is one of those is proportional to 1 over r squared so it's one it's one of those inverse square laws again and if you plot a graph of the gravitational field strength against the distance then it does it has this characteristic curve again and you'll see that if we double the distance so we've gone from on the surface so this is the radius of the earth so which so we'd be sat on the surface if we double it so instead of being here we're now twice as far away from the center as we are when they're on the surface when we double that distance then the gravitational field strength actually goes down by a factor of four because we've doubled this but because it's r squared if we double it we're actually saying it's doubled squared so two squared so the gravitational field strength goes down by a factor of four interestingly you can work out what the gravitational field strength is inside a planet it actually goes from zero right at the center which kind of makes sense because if you're sat at the center and you've got all this mass around you this mass will be pulling will be attracting you this way this mass will be attracting you this way so they cancel out and it goes in a nice straight line up to the surface and that's when it starts to drop off 
with this one over r squared kind of characteristic curve. So if you want to know the gravitational field strength of um, of a of basically a, of a planet or an object like this at a certain point at a certain distance away from it, you simply just use this equation here. So let's do a couple of examples. So we're on the Earth, and we know that the mass of the Earth is given by this, and the radius of the Earth is given by this. We want to find a value of the gravitational field strength both at the surface of the Earth and also at a, at a distance above the surface of the Earth. So let's first of all do the surface of the Earth. So we write our equation down. We put our numbers in. So g is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 multiplied by just the mass of the Earth. Well, the mass of the Earth is this thing. So that's 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And we divide it by the distance squared. So the distance is the distance from the center of the Earth to the surface. So it's just the radius. So 6.37 times 10 to the 6. And remember, always remember to square it. And if you do this, we get 9.83 newtons per kilogram. Now, you were probably expecting that it would be 9.81. Um, it does ver The gravitational field strength does vary a little bit over the surface of the Earth. If you imagine, for example, we've got the Earth like this, and there's a particularly dense bit of rock sort of here. If you're here, then the accumulation of mass here is going to be larger than, for example, the accumulation of mass over here, simply because this area is more dense than this. So because there's, in effect, more mass at this point, you would feel a very, very slightly stronger gravitational field strength here than you would over here. So actually, what's under, what, what the surface or what's actually underneath you, as you travel towards the centre of the Earth, the material that's under here actually makes a bit of a difference. So it is something to be kind of aware of, that the gravitational field strength isn't entirely uniform over a planet, but, from, but really we're going to assume that it actually is. So that's the first one. The second one, uh, we do exactly the same thing. So we want the gravitational field strength. It's again given by the same equation. So we put our numbers in 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Multiply by, we're still on the Earth, so the mass of the Earth is the same. 10 to the 24. This time the only thing that's different is the distance. So now we've got, if we think about the Earth, we've got the radius of the Earth, and we're a bit further above it. So what we've got is got the distance will be the radius plus the extra bit. So we've got the radius, 6.37 times 10 to the 6, plus an extra 10,000 metres. And again, don't forget to square it. And if you do that on your calculator, you get 9.80 newtons per kilogram. So even though we've gone actually a fair old distance, 10,000 metres above the surface of the Earth, the gravitational field strength has not really changed by very much. You've actually got to, got to go a fair way in order for the gravitational field strength to kind of start to look as if it's changing by a significant amount. Now, one thing that is kind of a very common kind of thing that comes up in exams is combining gravitational fields. So let's imagine that we've got this object here. This will feel the gravitational field from this planet so it'll be attracted in this direction, that way. And it'll also feel attraction from, it's, it's inside the gravitational field of this planet, so that will be attracted that way. So gravitational field strength is a vector, so that's really important. The gravitational field strength is a vector. In other words, it has a direction as well as a size. So, and the direction of the gravitational field strength is in the same, same direction as the force. So, um, if we wanted to know, the, if we wanted to combine the gravitational field strength of this and this to find out what the gravitational field in here at this particular point was, what we'd have to do is we would work out the gravitational field strength from this planet, so from planet one, the gravitational field from strength from planet two, and we'd take them away because they're acting in opposite directions. So the overall, I suppose the, the total gravitational field strength in this case would be the first gravitational field strength, take away the second gravitational field strength. In this case, though, we've got something slightly different. So we're out here. We want to know how strong the gravity is from these two bodies. Um, but this time, obviously, the forces are acting in the same direction. You've got this is these two 
bodies are attracted each other so there's a four this will feel an attraction this way and the same for this planet so in this case you'll have a gravitational field strength from planet one in that direction and a gravitational field strength from planet two in that direction so in this case our total gravitational field strength will be the sum of these two things so what you could do is if you're given the numbers you could work out in this situation for example the gravitational field strength at this point from this planet the gravitational field strength at this point from this planet take them away it would tell you what the gravitational field strength would be or the, t the overall gravitational field strength would be at this point over here so let's do an example um, so let's imagine that scientists they want to put a satellite um, exactly at the, the, the point in between the earth and the moon where the resultant force on it is zero so it'll probably be somewhere over here so if we've got the earth here and we've got the moon here because the earth is much much bigger it has a much stronger gravitational field so we would imagine that the satellite would be closer to the moon than it would be to the earth so we want to know um, we want to know what the distance is from the center of the earth to this satellite okay so um, if we think about it we're in that first situation where we will have a gravitational field strength in that direction and a gravitational field strength in that direction if we want the resultant force and so therefore the, the resultant gravitational field strength to be zero what we're actually saying is that the gravitational field strength from the earth minus the gravitational field strength from the moon must be zero in other words the gravitational field strength from the earth must equal the gravitational field strength from the moon so we know we've got our equation a general equation like that so in other words if we put our if we put some symbols in what we say is that the gravitational field strength for the, for the earth is oops is that where x is the distance from the earth to our satellite so x is that distance there okay is equal to the gravitational field strength from the moon so we've got the mass of the moon divided by and this is where we need to be a little bit careful because if we've said that the x is the distance from the center of the earth to the satellite then the distance from the center of the moon to the satellite will be the total distance take away this distance in other words it's the distance let's call the distance the overall distance d so the overall this oops, the overall distance over here is d so the overall distance this this distance from here to here which is what we want the distance from the moon to our satellite is simply d minus x like that now we're going to do everything algebraically because putting numbers in is actually kind of it makes it kind of tricky so if we look at this we've got a g on this side and a g on this side so we can oops sorry what we've I've done the typical mistake I've forgotten to square these so let's put the square on so we've got a g on this side g on this side they they cancel each other out so we end up with um, m e over x squared equals m m over the distance minus the distance that we want squared so we want to get x so now it basically becomes a maths problem so let's put a line down here like this so we're going to take this and we'll get all of our kind of x's and all that on one side so if we multiply by this i get d minus x squared over x squared is equal to the mass of the moon over the mass of the earth like that um, I can take my x squared inside this squared here so I can say that d minus x over x all squared is equal to mass of the moon over mass of the earth I'm then going to square root because I want to get x on its own so if I square root both sides I get d minus x over x is equal to the square root of the mass of the moon over the mass of the earth like that okay so we'll pop another line down here so we're going from here up to here okay now um, what we'll do is we'll cancel the x's out on the top and the bottom just for this thing so we end up with um, d over x minus 1 is equal to our square root m 
of the moon, mass of the Earth, like that. Um, add one to both sides, so I get d over x equals 1 plus the square root, mass of the moon, uh, mass of the Earth. Okay, right, I'm then going to do the reciprocal of both sides, because that will get x on the top. So I get x over d equals, and I'm going to write it like this, 1 plus square root, mass of the moon, over mass of the Earth, to the power of minus 1. Finally, I get x equals, I multiply both sides by d, so I get d into this bracket, 1 plus the square root mass of the moon over mass of the earth, and that whole bracket is to the power of minus 1. So I could now go and put my numbers in, because x is equal to, well d is simply um, this distance here, it's the distance from the earth to the moon. So I could put that number in there. Um, and then I put my numbers for the mass in. So again, I get the mass of the moon, mass of the Earth. It tells me that the mass of the moon is there. The mass of the Earth is there. And so if I work that out on my calculator, I get that x is equal to 3.46 uh, 10 to the 5 kilometers. So that's my final answer. So that's how far the Earth needs to be away from the center of, sorry, how far the satellite needs to be away from the center of the Earth. That's actually a very, very complicated example um, because there's lots of algebra. Like I say, you can do it with numbers. Um, and if you do it with numbers, it'll work out exactly the same and you'll get to exactly the same sort of answer. And actually it makes sense because what we've said, what we've seen is that we're actually a lot closer to the moon than we are to the earth, which is exactly what we expected. So in this video, we, we recapped um, radial and uniform fields. We introduced um, what the gravitational field strength is and we saw that we can um, use this equation here to actually calculate it and it doesn't depend upon the mass of the object that's in the gravitational field it only depends upon the mass of for example the planet um, that's providing that gravitational field and we did a couple of calculations to show how you can use this so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again soon